Welcome back to the second episode in this series where we're adding an AI to the Chrome Dinosaur game. So in this video, we're going to finish off the game so that in the next episode, we can add the AI. If you watch the first episode, then you'll know that our game looks something like this at the moment. So the next step is to add the score and the ground. To begin, we're going to create a couple of global variables in the main function that we're going to require in a moment. Then we're going to create a variable called points and set it to zero. And then we can also set the X position and the Y position of our background, as well as the game speed. And then we're going to add in the code block for the score. Now what this function does is really simple. Every time this function is called, it increments the variable points by one. And every time the points reach a multiple of 100, the game speed is incremented. And these two last lines allow us to display the number of points on our screen. Next, we're going to add in a code block for the background. So this little block of code is what makes the background look like it's moving. Now for this AI tutorial, the background isn't particularly important. It only adds a little bit of aesthetic to our game to make it look a little bit better. But if you want to learn a little bit more about this block of code that makes the ground under the dinosaur move, then I'll be linking a video in the top right hand corner of the screen where I actually use exactly the same code and go into a lot of detail on how it works. And finally, we can add these two functions we just created into our main loop. And now if we go ahead and run this code, you'll see that our game looks much better than it did before. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is add the obstacles to the game. So that in the end, it will look something like this. So let's jump back into the editor and add the obstacles. First, we're going to import all the images of our obstacles. That means all the images of our small cacti as well as the ones of our large cacti. Then we're going to create a class called obstacles. In the obstacles class, we're going to add an init function and we're going to initialize the image of the obstacle, its type, its rectangle, and its X coordinate. After that, we're going to add an update function. And since we want the obstacle to move from the right hand side to the left, we're simply going to subtract the game speed from the X coordinate of the obstacle. And as soon as the obstacle moves off of the screen, we want to delete the obstacle from the obstacles list that we're going to create in just a moment. The last function we add to the obstacles class is a function called draw, which takes an additional argument, which is the screen on which we want to draw the obstacle. And all this function is going to do is simply blit or draw the image of the obstacle onto the screen. Now we can create a class for the small cactus, which inherits from the obstacle class. And it is only going to have an init method where the Y coordinate of the small cactus is specified. And we can do exactly the same thing for the large cactus. The only difference compared to the small cactus is going to be that the Y coordinate needs to be a bit further up on the screen, which means the Y coordinate needs to be a bit lower. Now, outside of the classes that we've just created, we're going to create a function called remove, and it is going to remove the dinosaurs that run into an obstacle. Okay, now we're going to make a couple of changes to the main function. We're going to add obstacles and dinosaurs to our list of global variables. We're going to need that later on. Then we're going to create an empty list called obstacles, and this list is simply going to store the obstacles that are created. Finally, there are a couple of changes we need to make to the main loop. First, we're going to say that if the length of the dinosaurs list is zero, we want to break out of the main loop. Then we're going to add a small block of code that is going to randomly generate the cacti on our screen. Finally, we want to call the draw and the update function on all the obstacles in the obstacles list. In addition, we also want to state that if the dinosaur collides with one of the cacti, then we want to remove him from the dinosaurs list. Now if we go ahead and run this code, you'll see that we have a playable version of the game. And as soon as the dinosaur hits an obstacle, that means a cacti, the game quits. Okay, so we're going to leave it here for this tutorial. And in the next one, we're going to add the AI. 